Hey everyone, so this is post editing. I want to do this really, really quickly. We are going to link a document of all of the sources and the conversations down in the comment section. It will be the pinned comment in the comment section. I have done my best to sort of format things for clarity. I tried to color coordinate a little bit, stuff that's my own personal thoughts or sort of uh, regurgitating stuff I can't show you that's in brackets, uh, stuff like that. And so if you do anything today, okay, because this is a long video, you may not want to watch it. I wouldn't even want to watch it. Actually, I mean, I like long videos, so maybe I would. But my point is, if you don't do anything else today, read that document because that is basically all the information. Those are all the sources, all sort of the interviews that we conducted today are in that document. And you guys can share that document obviously all of that stuff um we would like you to if possible say that we are the source all right like we had to do a lot of work for this uh hunter and i had school today and we are completely wiped out by this whole ordeal obviously it's not equivalent to the pain that um the rooster teeth employees have had to go through but we would just appreciate it if you guys just sourced it back to us um because we did um do a lot of work and all of that stuff and so yeah that would just be the right thing to do um but yeah that's that's it. Just wanted to say that there is a link to the document. Hello everyone, it's Kalaxon and Hunter here. If you guys feel more informed, you guys should subscribe, become patrons over on Patreon to support the channel. Remember to follow us on social media. And I mentioned the Patreon thing just another time because this video was a lot of work. Alright, it was a lot of work and we are here for you. Hey, Cal. Yeah. Remember how a couple days ago we made a video about how everything was going to be okay? Oh, I remember. And then the next day we made a video and we thought, wow, this is as worse as it's going to get. Yeah. And, and we thought, oh, poor video. Gray. They drove Gray away. How could they do that? How could they lose him like that? Yeah. Remember when we said that? Okay. The fucking Uno card. Love that for me. Love this Uno reversal. Okay. Because now we have this image. All right. So if you guys don't know, this video is going to be all about Gray because I have found some sources, all right? So I went out there in the world, except I didn't because it was all online. I went out there, I talked to some people, I got people to verify this information. And so if you are interested in that, this is the video for you. So basically, we start off with this post, all right? Clownfish TV, I think that's what their YouTube channel name is called. This is a summary of the insider source that they got. And at first I was skeptical, okay? Because some of these, like, drama channels with the weird looking thumbnails, I'm sort of like, eh. Okay, but they actually seem to be legit because I was able to get multiple verifications of this post. And so this is a summary of the information that Clownfish TV, I guess you could say, collected. Because a lot of people were like, really, Cal? It's just a 4chan post, right? But no, this is just a summary, and I thought people would understand that because it looks like one, but anyway, I understand. Um, Gray was a shitty director. Made the crew redo a bunch of shit for Jedlock's first episode. Approved and unapproved shit constantly. The team working on it couldn't say anything because he was also the department head. That, that seems, seems like, like a gross conflict of interest, Hunter. Yeah. Mandated a champagne toast after they were finished with the last episode of Ruby. Which is so Mandated weird. like a dictator. Allegedly. Supposedly. Maybe. Okay. The Genlock team was hard at work, and I guess Genlock team didn't get to play like it, it, with the reindeer games because they were so hard at work they couldn't join for the champagne toast. And the Ruby team just wanted to go home. Gray leaves an hour before the toast he made everyone stay behind for, which is the worst part of this entire, like, sentence in this paragraph. Uh, Cohen um, Wooten is also to blame for the state of Rooster Teeth since he enabled Gray. Genlock went millions over budget because they had to keep redoing shit. Extended the schedule by months, which makes sense because Genlock was pushed back. Had to get more people. It ended up underperforming. Rooster Teeth tried to project Gray and wanted to, him to do a second season anyway because they are friends. The teams got mad. And then it says that Cohen and Gray were fired. All right, so before we get into that, let's just go with this post for a minute. Cohen hasn't said anything about being fired. But then again, neither did Gray for a long period after yeah. he had allegedly left Rooster Teeth. Yeah. After this post, I was, again, I was skeptical. So I was like, okay, I gotta go find 
some sources, all right? We got to do some journalism. If you guys don't know, my mom has a journalism degree, And my right? dad works at Nintendo. <laughs> no. So she imparted some some knowledge on me um, in my pursuit of the truth, I guess you could say, or whatever. Here's the thing, though, okay? This is, a like, a trust thing, a trust exercise, all right? First of all, we have to protect our sources because they trust me to protect them and not get them blacklisted from the industry or fired or other terrible, terrible Sued. things. Or suit. Yeah, whatever. Okay, so that's the first thing. But as much as they have to trust me, you guys have to trust me, okay? You guys have to trust that Hunter and I both looked at this, verified that they worked at Rooster Teeth or maybe still work at Rooster Teeth. No, we're not gonna say, right? Whatever. You know, you guys have to trust me that we're not just making all of this up for views, all right? They're verified sources. We went in there. We got, like, we sort of got their stories and got their answers. You understand what I mean? Because obviously I know that if you can't say that, oh, this person said this, this person said that, people are always sort of going to be, you know, skeptical yeah. because you can't give names. And so it's like, oh, you could have written that yourself. But you guys have to sort of trust in Hunter yeah. and I. And like, that is what this video is going to require. You guys have to trust us, right? And trust what we did, like trust our journalism, you could say. And you also have to understand that this is people's livelihoods and we can't just give names no matter how badly you want them, right? And I feel like that's important. And at the end okay. of the day, could we really have made up that champagne story? Yeah, <laughs> I mean, that post wasn't us though. No, that's true. But you guys will see, like the amount of detail, I would have to be a fucking psychopath and Hunter would have to go along with it. Like that's how crazy some of this shit is getting, right? And so that's what I'm saying. You guys have to trust us, all right? And now that we got that out of the way in our six minute intro, which I really wasn't trying to do, but at the same time, this video is gonna be a long one anyway, like, <laughs> whatever if you guys want to know you'll get you'll get through all this part so we're gonna switch screens now that was just for us you guys won't see anything different so this is what happened in the timeline of events so without prompting I got source number one okay um so this source confirms gray was shitty and fired people in mass was a bit shocked pretty sure that genlock makes production um, Genlock make Genlock's production caused a lot of current issues. Yeah. Okay, that may have been my fault. I may have butchered that. And Gray had stepped down um, for a hike after everything came to light before RTX. Things were apparently so bad that most of the animation team now refused to work on Genlock. Which is so first, wow. you have this first source confirming that Gray was shitty and fired people and like <laughs> allegedly, supposedly, possibly. Um, and then they said, like, pretty sure, like, Genlock caused a lot of current issues. That's basically what that second point's saying. The third point is, is that Gray had to step down for a hike after everything came to light before RTX. So that was the crunch stuff, right? And he had to step down, um, so he was and all that they stuff. thought he was ultimately responsible for that. Yeah, I, I, I think so, because, you know, Matt's making this post in response to the crunch, and he removes gray like we always thought that that had some sort of co correlation and hunter and i were like we don't know but at the same time like why else would you do it and back then hunter and i were like oh well now gray can focus on genlock this is a good thing he deserves that break and then hunter and i are fucking clowns okay we are clowns all right i'm gonna go get my little clown nose <laughs> and honk it because we were so so wrong about and we're gonna keep our feelings to the very end of this video because I don't want to get angry because I'm trying to report this unbiasedly right we're just sort of I asked them questions they answered right but the fact that we were like oh Gray's the victim how could they drive him away from Genlock and now Uno reverse card it's the exact opposite right so that was source number one so we're gonna move on actually and jump around a little to source number three all right, and this just makes sense because they answered my questions before two, but I contacted two before three. Does that make sense? All right, so here, we're just going to read what I said word for word. Uh, Hunter, do you want to be the poor employee that was mistreated by Grey Haddock? Why not? All right, so this is me. I was wondering if you could speak with me. Former RT employees are coming out about how they were treated, mostly by Gray. Basically, this post came out, 
that post that we showed you earlier, and other people have contacted me to verify it. But I'd like to hear from you if the same kind of thing was happening while you were working. Obviously, it would be anonymous and all of that sort of stuff. We're not trying to get you in trouble. <laughs> he responded that uh, Gray cared about Gray. He locked himself in his office the whole time or was out gallivanting in Japan having fun. I which, just love gallivanting in Japan. Which we Beside were, yeah. the champagne toast, right? Like, it just, it, it paints it, a picture. All it, right, It's continue. funny that I also remember those videos being released of Miles Carey and Gray all in Japan. Uh, he'd hold company me uh, meetings weekly to brag about the fun stuff he did until he, Miles, and Carrie got in trouble from hires up because so many people complained about it. And to be clear, Miles and Carrie are good boys. Okay, we, we talked, later, we later asked a bunch of sources about Miles and Carrie and also like a couple other things. Miles and Carrie are not bad. I just want to make that clear since they were mentioned. We'll find that out later. That uh, Gray was probably one of the worst bosses he's ever had. He didn't want to work. Uh, he didn't work on Genlock, which he thanks God for. Uh, but he was super worried about it, as Gray was in charge. And it sounds like all his fears were merited uh, from what he had heard. Yeah, so that's basically what he said. He was just like, "I didn't work on Genlock. Praise be!" And then he was just like, "Well, I was super worried about it." Now look what happened. And so I said, the anonymous poster also mentions um, Cohen. Wooten, but I don't know anything about them. Like, ba the post basically said he enabled Gray, but IDK, right, tech speak, uh, who this dude is. So, do you know anything about that? Also, thank you for responding to me. Smiley face, but not too close together. Colon, space, bracket. Anyways, uh, one to always cut to the chase. Uh, source number three says, Wooten is an asshole. Cohen is the only... Cohen is the one right below Gray. He's a head producer. He was a Hollywood producer, and he worked for Michael Bay for seven years. I couldn't find anything about that, but that doesn't mean it's not <laughs> he true. He gets people to work by promising them what they want, and then making excuses or blaming them for not delivering. That sounds uh, sketchy. Not that's. Great. I don't want to say right. necessarily gaslighting, because I don't think that's the word, but it's sort of like... Oh, I promise you this if you'll do a good job. You didn't. Fuck you. Like, that's sort of what it sounds like. But anyway, my other source was talking about how Gray prevented people from having creative control. Did you hear about that from any of the shows? Nomad, Ruby, etc. Like, the plan was to do X, but Gray came in and forced them to do Y instead, which was far from what they had wanted to do. And so... He basically says that... Uh the guy who created Nomad had it basically taken away from him. However, he wasn't in 2D at the time, so he only heard about it offhand. Yeah, so like, he heard it from supposedly, I suppose, somebody in 2D. And so I was like, yeah, how did that go down? And he didn't, he didn't know. He just heard about it. And he didn't even, like, he was just like the guy who created, that dude, like, you know what I mean? And so there's not really like a relation there. And so I said, oh, I see, but what about with Ruby? And so he said... Gray was barely involved as usual. He was described as uh, being too busy as being a rock star, and that Cohen had ran it, yeah. being Ruby. And so I said, did uh, uh, Conan do anything uh, like that then? I guess it would be hard to know unless Miles and Carrie let it be known, in a sense. Like, if they lost some creative control with the volumes. Uh, apparently, Cohen only hounded... The non Mostly hounded. Mostly. And I was like, how so? And so he said... Cohen was basically in charge because Gray was never there. Because Gray is gallivanting in Japan. Guys, I know that we're laughing, but that's to hide our rage. Okay? <laughs> I feel like that we are so upset about this situation, and it's so ridiculous to hear about champagne toast in Japan gallivanting. Like, it's literally... It's those times where things are so terrible, you laugh. Because that's your natural response. Anyway, you can continue. And that uh, he, uh, our source puts it that since leaving Rooster Teeth, he had lost 60 pounds and is so much mentally healthier and physically healthier. And so I thought that that was interesting just because, I don't know, it's just like, it really shows your condition. It's like leaving high school and how suddenly we both have like clear skin and like we're not depressed anymore. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like that's exactly. And if so you run a company that's you know similar causing high school to related high school. illnesses. <laughs> don't like that's not. And you good. see that crunch has it like has a real a physical, physical impact on, on people. people. Exactly. And so I, in the middle of contacting this source, I was 
emailing another source and I made questions. So I took the question I had asked and I pasted it into our chat conversation and I said, how would you describe Gray's personality? I know other Ruby YouTubers have met him and are pretty shocked because he seemed pretty normal and charismatic, personable. Uh, did did his ego get really big because of Genlock and the names associated with it? Did he think he always knew best when it came to what to do creatively? Was he just a control freak? I guess, in short, what was his rationality for doing all this, if you have any inclination? Did he use his power as department head to threaten people into doing what they wanted? And so we find out, right, source one, I guess, or source zero, which is the uh, 4chan um, summary, said that people were afraid because he was department head. And so we sort of already knew that. Um, and so I, I already, I know you already described Gray a bit. Um, and if he was never around, it may be difficult. And he said, um, Oh, I didn't have to deal with him on Genlock. And I'm sure that's where his biggest ego came out. He was pretty hands off on Ruby. And um, so then I asked, Miles and Carrie aren't going to be exposed, are they? LOL. Please let there be someone good somewhere in there. And apparently, uh, they were super nice the whole time. It's a little obvious to what... No, a little uh, oblivious. A little, they were a little oblivious to what uh, Cohen and Gray were doing, uh, but they were young and kind of got dropped into their roles, their roles being writing it and occasionally directing. directing. Yeah. Uh, there's nothing really to expose on them. They were nice guys, and compared to Gray, they really didn't have any powers over the employees at all just the story and just so then the he said they are just writers no power outside of that and then i said okay thank you and so that was source number three okay and so now we're starting to get this picture. picture all right like we're getting this picture painted of gray where he sounds allegedly, supposedly, like an, possibly, like, an like a maniac. Like, like a, I don't like a know. Like a flighty auteur. Like, have you ever heard of Stanley Kubrick making a woman do the same take like 400 times? I also sort of wonder, like, could this be, I don't know, like, there's two options really that this is a tragic story of a man who sort of let himself get too caught up in sort of his work and his perfectionism and he became bad like he just became a bad person or it's the story of someone who was always bad being put into a position of power where he could continue to do bad things and now not feeling sorry for said bad which things which i don't know if i necessarily agree with the second i guess variation i mean we don't know him ultimately right we don't know, we don't we know him and there's probably more variations than that but that's yeah. just what i'm personally wondering because i'm trying to like i did this all day today so this is my mental process as i'm starting to read these things but we don't have the answer so let's just move on okay so this is source number two and there's a lot of information in here that is too personal and so we had to like scrub this all right or it else would be very clear who this person was and yeah and it would just be career. it would just be bad it would just be bad it would just be bad so like a lot of this is redacted but i'm not gonna say that every time something on so hi there redacted all right <laughs> there's a whole paragraph that no no uh the reason i wanted to email you was to help validate your recent video and post about gray haddock um, and so this is in quotation. So this is what I mean by taking chunks, mostly due to the people that Mr. Haddock had hurt, including myself. He was ultimately why I left the company. So that's, um, what they said. And then when he posted about parting ways, it angered me because he was trying to blend in with the very people he arguably had a hand in hurting. Hunter and I will talk about that later. However, there are good people at RT. I have so many wonderful friends there. Him leaving may incite change, but I'm worried about the powers that be won't make changes in time and animation may get hurt in the end. I think telling the truth is important and I don't want my friends nor anyone else in the industry to be able to be hurt by him again. If you have any questions, I'm happy to help you clarify um, however I'm able. And so this is when I got into like full journalism mm -hmm. mode, I guess. So I crafted nine questions, some of the answers I can't show you, and because some of them had to be them. cut down because I numbered my questions. I was like one, one A, one B, one C, two, right? But they didn't answer like that, like uh, because, you know, they didn't. Um, and so we just, it's, it's kind of everywhere. And so we had to cut and paste a couple things. So I hope that you guys understand that. Um, and so this is something that I'm saying. This is my own voice, okay? 
Everyone who worked on Nomad and the people that didn't seem to know that Gray basically took all creative control away from the dude. All right, so source number, do, I think we called him three, even though he by, was the second dude, one we read. you mean creator. Yeah, right? the creator, right? So our last source talked about that, and the source, like, the last one that we did, like, previously to this one. And then the final one that we're going to talk about in this video also said that. So basically, we have, like, three different people who are all talking about the Nomad incident. Like, that's basically what it is. Even the people that didn't work in the 2D department knew about Gray's shenanigans with the creator, okay? And so I feel like that that's just important. Like, that's me talking, because I noticed that's a common thread in all three of these sort of posts, right? Uh, some people were afraid of Gray because Gray was judge, jury, and executioner. That is a direct quote. Uh, this even made people afraid to go to HR, but eventually they got to HR. That's my voice. Eventually, after HR, there was direct contact with Matt, so obviously that's Matt Hullum, right? Uh, and so reportedly, allegedly, supposedly, so this happened in animation, like yeah. in the animation department, and people were witness because he stormed down and got everyone in a room, all right? And so people saw this, were in the room, the room where it happened, if you could say. And so I think that this is important. And so this is, I guess, neutral tone off here, okay? Everyone's giving Matt shit like Matt did this, okay? But Matt is the fucking good guy here. Okay, because he, as soon as he knew, he stormed down there and, like, okay. dealt with whatever was hap- Like, dealt with the shenanigans, the, the gray shenanigans, right? And so, like, he could have taken action sooner. And I get that, like, there's an argument for that. But if people were too afraid to speak up, you can't really blame him for not necessarily knowing what's going on if no one tells him. But as soon as he was told, okay, as soon as he was told, allegedly, supposedly, reportedly, he went to correct the wrong as soon as he was aware, right? And I'm sure that he was the one who personally kicked Gray out the door because of all this, because he got down there and he was like, what the fuck are you doing, my dude? He didn't say that. That is not a direct quote. But you understand what I mean? And so that's what really is grinding my gears. Again, we're trying to keep neutral journalist tone here, but that grinds my gears. The fact that people are giving shit to Matt, but Matt seems to be the actual, like, he he's not just like, Ha ha ha, he yeah, like Gray is gonna abuse, abuse you guys. Like, no, he seems like, like he seems good. like a force of good, exactly. So my first question was, did you hear about this happening um, to all of the shows? So like Ruby, Nomad, for example. And so again, I asked about Ruby, just cause with Nomad, we already know from people that the stuff with the creator, right? So I asked again with Ruby, like Gray forcing Miles, Carrie, whoever else to change their vision for any of the Ruby volumes or episodes. Miles and Carrie were good dudes. The third person to collaborate that Miles and Carrie are in fact good dudes, okay? And so you can read, sorry, well, I forgot. Uh, they were also the faces of the company. Faces, they well, were faces, faces right? Yeah. So this person specifically uses the term faces as opposed to the, the on-screen talent, you yes. could say, as opposed to the not, so we'll talk about that later maybe. And in the company, so they never had much pushback, so Ruby was fine. But the crunch and the time to write was likely the cause of quality and downgrading. Uh, they deft crunched too. Yeah. So, but like when they talk Miles about and Carrie had and, crunch time. Yes. So they were forced to crunch. But when they talk about the cause of quality and downgrading of Ruby, because. Um, I, I think that. that's what they mean. Like, I think they mean in past volumes, not okay. volume six, because volume six quite good. was quite good, right? Overall, I think that they meant like the volume five issues, because. Mm -hmm. I can't like I can't visualize this timeline. I think Ruby Volume Five probably would have been ending when Genlock was getting greenlit, green yeah. right? And so I feel like I think that they had to crunch regardless of Genlock. But anyway, you can keep reading. Overall, both of them are good people and don't have much power like Gray did. So this is the second time that we've heard <laughs> this now. Uh, they mostly write and direct, as we've mentioned previously, and stay to those roles and do their jobs well considering all the other guns yeah so that's the second time that we've heard that miles and carrie are good boys and that they're good so that's good um well i guess third time but we haven't read the last one yet and so in the anonymous post from yesterday they discussed genlock going super over budget did things need to be cut or rushed with ruby nomad camp camp etc because they were blowing genlock money 
So our source uh, responded that Gray supposedly took some of Tootie's money, Tootie Department's money, and to dip it into his own project that he had full control of. So the money that could have gone to Nomad, Nomad camp or camp. potentially Camp Camp uh, went to And so Genmar. source number four and is going to talk about Nomad yeah. of Nowhere being rushed, so I think that this was probably mostly Nomad's money, Which technically, being taken away. Which goes back to the earlier statement away. that from the very beginning, that screenshot that said that Genlock's budget... Budget went over... over. So this is like... This isn't even just... I don't even know how to explain it. It's not even just like, oh, Gray's like a mean guy to all his... Like, no, isn't this... I don't want to say it's illegal, but he's taking money to put into his own... Sh like, he, I guess you know, you he, he has control of the funds. money, right? Like, yeah, you can reallocate funds. He's allowed. But, like, doesn't that strike you as a little... Like, this is... I don't want to say... It's not laundering, but it's like... It's, you understand what I mean? Like, isn't that just crazy? That shouldn't that be someone that, that has... Yeah, exactly. Like, not that. you. Like, shouldn't y'all have your own sort of accounting people? And I get that they may not know exactly where the money goes, but, like, catch them up to speed. This is a conflict of interest, and that is your first mistake. Do not let the person who is the department head and allocates funds to the shows also be in charge of a show. That's a conflict of be interest. Of that's a Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, be in charge of Genlock. Like, no, that's a clear conflict of interest. How could you guys let that happen? And that's where I'm like, Matt really like you know what i mean obviously but i know we said matt's a good guy but maybe he trusted gray yeah, and that gray, gray wouldn't do that gray and gray the broke their trust and so so they probably trusted him source for then sort of continues to wait talk about that's how... me uh the anonymous post from yesterday mentioned um uh keon uh, uh wooten <laughs> do you have any information cohen, cohen. did i say keon again okay. i'm so sorry um, do you have any information about that? I'm not sure what his role was or how he enabled Gray. So I asked this question before we got the other information that we got before about how Conan was an asshole. That's a direct quote, supposedly, allegedly, possibly. All right. Um, and so we said... That Cohen Wooten was always, uh, always supported the biggest person in the room and never truly fought for what was being asked. But he acted like he did. If you were one-on-one -on -one with him, he would claim that he was on your side. And then presumably later renege on that. Yeah, uh, presumably. He caused a lot of damage by doing that, and yes, he enabled Gray. So there is correlation. Yeah, again, and so that's what I'm saying, statement. guys. It's like I get when people are skeptical of Glassdoor because mm -hmm. anyone could have posted that, whatever. But you have four independent sources who were not in contact with each other and worked in totally different sort of departments. Yeah. Like so the theory. other dude, like the other source from before was like, oh, that that like this dude, that dude, like you know what I mean? Like they didn't know like the other people like in the other departments, if that makes sense. But people from other departments are like collab the same story, and it's not like the most like I don't know how to explain this. The simplest answer is not that it was a conspiracy and they all got together. These four random people, okay, because they didn't contact me. I went out and contacted all of them. And so it would be impossible for them to guess, oh, you know what uh, Kalaxin's going to do before she goes to, like, school this morning? She's going to get on the train and she's going to contact me, you, you, and you, okay? So we better get our story straight. Like, no, there's no possible fucking way that that happened, Okay. And so that's sort of what I'm saying is that you see all these correlations with um, Cohen, all right? And Cohen isn't, I guess, mentioned that much. Like, he's mentioned in Source Zero once. Uh, he wasn't mentioned in one. He was mentioned in, like, the last one we did, and now he's being mentioned here. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. And we don't even know if he's still employed. So. Or if he's going to, like, talk about this openly. yeah. And so I said, this is number six. So this is the question that I asked before. How would you describe Gray's personality? I know other Ruby YouTubers, blah, 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 blah. If you guys listen to us before, it's the same question. Um, but I put 6A. Now looking at his post, it really rubs me the wrong way that he blended in as well. And it strikes me as a bit psychopathic. Obviously, listen, I'm not qualified to armchair diagnose, but something seems so extremely manipulative about that, it's really hard to ignore. So that's sort of what I said. Right. Um, the source responded that Gray's uh, personality is either that he's completely clueless or knew exactly what he was doing and is uh, a sociopath. 
allegedly. He's Supposedly. Hard, it's hard to say. Either way, uh, was not leadership material, and in our source's opinion, should have never took the responsibility for anything. Or he never took it for Or he anything. never took the responsibility for anything. Uh, he thinks that Genlock was something he pushed through himself. That Grey pushed through yeah, himself. Yeah, Grey being. Because uh, Grey was the head and could make the final call <laughs> to show it to Bernie and Matt on his own and push it over other 3D pitches. Which is interesting, because then, like, what 3D pitches did we not Yeah, exactly! What? 3D pitches were there that weren't Gemlock. What could have we have gotten? We'll never fucking know because Gray steamrolled, allegedly, supposedly, probably, if he has no problem taking money from all these places. You know what I mean? Like, he has no problem steamrolling on other people either, allegedly. Gray was already using company money to make concept arc and work, uh, work for it without it being greenlit. So Gray was using company money to make concept art and have people do work for it. It was yellow lit. So it wasn't completely mm -hmm. good to go yet. And he was already, this is the second time yeah. that we've been told that Gray is using money. And Which it's from the same person, super uncommon, but like. it's just, that rubs me the wrong way. And because pe people are like, well, why didn't Ruby get this? Why didn't Ruby get that? But this hurts Ruby too, because we don't, it seems like there is a 2D budget and there's a 3D budget. And we can maybe assume that Gray was not splitting the 3D budget with Ruby. And it doesn't need to be equal, okay? Because Ruby already has models and already has assets. It doesn't need to be equal, but it needs to be fair. And if he's already using company money before a show is even greenlit, like, sis, no, you can't, <laughs> like, you can't do Although that. Although that's not totally un... I don't think, I think that, you know, bureaucracy needs to be followed. If there are rules, you start when it's greenlit, you start like, when it's greenlit. I don't that's wanna, all like, I'm saying. I don't armchair, I don't think it's appropriate for us to, like, armchair, I don't know, CEO. Yeah. But, like, because what I've heard of some, that, uh, some um, other, I guess productions that that's not totally rare but clearly this thing went over budget and, then and clearly it didn't work so it right wasn't, so, it's different yeah. when you use money you're not supposed to and it all works out and you yeah. make a lot of money and everyone's like oh remember that time it's okay everything's fine no this backfired and that's the most important part is that he did all this and look what happened yeah and so uh number seven so i asked were you around for the animation team's fighting back, so to speak. Like, in the anonymous post, Source Zero, right? The team got mad and basically put up a fight about not wanting to work on Genlock anymore. And even Source Number One that we talked about, um, if I if I can scroll so back up to the top of the really document, said, um, no, no, the, sor the first Source Hunter. Oh, yeah. um, and so this person said, um, things were so bad that most of the animation now refused to work on Genlock. Yes. So that was Source Number One that said that. Um, and so... Um, you can read this, yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, our source said that it seemed oh, like... Oh, sorry, I didn't scroll up all the way. There you go. Uh, the source said that, uh, others were disgruntled and started talking poorly about Gray's role as, like, well, that... Well, yeah, our other two sources, other. right, talked yeah. about... It seems like the animators were refusing to work on Genlock. Uh, that happened later, uh, though judging by our sources and the sort of timeline we have. That was me. Guessing. I was supposed to say yeah. that. So the animators refusing to work on Genlock is recent. The animators fighting back when this person was employed was starting. So the tensions were rising when this person was working, but it didn't come to full fruition until later. I hope that that circle helps everybody, okay? Uh, then I asked, do you think things will change now without Gray and, Co and um, Cohen. Cohen? So again, Cohen hasn't said that he's fired. That's the but RT insider source did. zero. So that's source zero that said that Cohen's fired. Yeah. We he hasn't said anything, and I only realized that like I was like, oh shit, like he didn't post it. Like we don't actually know. Um, but I asked that question because I thought that he was gone. Um, if he's not, I don't know. Like maybe Cohen was apparently a position under Gray. Right. So for all we know, maybe he was but afraid he, of Gray but too. But he ended up. Uh, dictating a lot of Ruby because yeah. Gray wasn't there for Ruby. Allegedly. Yeah, allegedly. Um, I imagine there are others enabling bad behavior, um, and I see what you said before about uh, hoping that it incites change, but if they were the cause of the poor work environment, now that they're gone, will that solve many problems? And so then he said... Uh, that with Gray and Cohen gone, I think it might be uh, 
it might help the company. However, if they still work with him, like Gray implies in his tweet that he said that he's still opening the door for to working potential with, yeah. artistic opportunity, it implies that it won't look good. Also, our uh, source states that there are plenty of faces uh, that have been very that have a very toxic mentality and supported Gray. And so I think that that's interesting, and I don't yes. want to get into it too much in this video because this is going to be a fifty-minute video. Let's just all be fucking honest, okay? Um, cause I mean, this is like, I guess if you would read this, it was fat, like it would be faster than us talking about it. Like the idea of faces is not really anything new. Like there have been posts in the glass door reviews, which is like source negative one at this point. Cause that was months ago about faces getting special treatment. And so it seems like there's definitely that in the company, right? Because here's the thing. All right. Again, people were skeptical about glass door, but you put what glass door said with source zero and with these actual people that are verified to work at Rooster Teeth, okay? Individually, it may not seem like a lot. You put everybody's um, cohesive stories together, which, like, they didn't come up and play. Like, it's not like, you know, they witnessed, you know, a crime and they all had time to talk about how they wanted it to, how they should talk to the police. Like, it's nothing like that. You know what I'm saying? And so it's like all of these people have the same... You know what I'm Story. saying? Like, all the general people have themes. the same general themes, right? And I all, like, I think, th I even said with the glass door stuff that I thought the truth was somewhere in the middle. Like, Gray probably wasn't an evil dictator, but he probably wasn't a great guy either. Because why would, not. why would there be the general theme of people saying that he was a shitty director, as they say, allegedly, supposedly, probably, um, possibly, I should say, not probably, but anyway, um... You know, what also is all of that stuff. What also is that, like, who are the faces? Uh, this is and totally what were the three? What were the pitches? I want to know everyone's pitches. I want to know. Pitches. I want to know all the pitches. I want to know the pitches <laughs> that were apparently steamrolled for by Genlock. Gen yeah, because you know that's a conflict of interest again. Mm -hmm. Oh, like, I get to pick some shows that will be presented to Matt and Bernie. Let me pick my like, say, there's three shows that could have been presented to Matt and Bernie, and Gray takes up a slot. Not because his show is the best, but because he's gray. Like, that's not okay, guys. Though so this might as become a PR issue, just as the Vic Mignogna yeah. thing started slow. Because, I mean, we're not trying to speed. make it a PR issue, no. right? But I'm saying, as the perspective, like, from the perspective as a fan, you look at this information from the glass door people right with, that started all this you look at what happened after the crunch was exposed and gray stepping down and now you're hearing all these things about gray what the fuck are you supposed to think you understand what i'm saying it's like i don't know how to explain this there's something called the sausage principle that if you love something you should never learn how it's made because inevitably it will disappoint you when you learn that it's made in some unethical or but not everyone's like way. that. Like, and even they said, like Miles that. and Carrie are good. Yeah. Matt seems to be the hero sure of one particular anecdote yeah. or incident. And so there are good people at Rooster Teeth. And that's what everyone had to say across the board, all of the sources, except number one. So number one, if you guys are curious, they gave me that information, but they wouldn't talk to me for this video. So they yeah. wouldn't give anything else. They were just it like, it was just like, here's that. Like, here's this part. Like, the post is true, but I don't want to talk, okay? So I don't know, I don't know why that is. I didn't, I was just like, okay, <laughs> thanks. That means uh, the champagne toast was real, and oh honestly, that's God. what we're here for, but... Anyway, and so it's just so frustrating to know that this went on, and obvi allegedly, and obviously, something was done about it eventually, because Gray's gone, okay? And that's what we can take away, as it's gone. like, so maybe. Potentially question mark we don't really know he didn't say right um not confirmed so it's sort of like people knew like people saw gray do this people experienced gray doing this to them and it took this long like genlock had an entire green lit and he was probably doing it on other shows too right because we hear all these anecdotes about what happened when nomad and gray was responsible for taking away creative control and like like forcibly removing this person from their own fucking show, right? And so you hear about that, but it's also like, this has been going on for at least a year, maybe more than a year. And so you sort of, I'm, I mean, again, like, I'm not going to speculate, like, when did it start? Like, what what led Gray down this dark, twisted path? Like, no, we're not going to do that. Let me say his shoes were too tight. 
And anyway, like, I don't know. It's just so weird. And I just wish, I don't know. I just wish that people had said something earlier. And I was talking to another Ruby YouTuber about this. And I was like, we profit off of Ruby, okay? Like, to keep it real. We get Patreon money from people that want to see our stuff early or discuss with us in our exclusive Discord chats or whatever. All right, we make YouTube uh, revenue off of Ruby, off of Genlock, off of loving the show, off of criticizing the show, off of doing theories videos and shipping and videos about the show. And I can't help but feel there's no, there's not necessarily an ethical way like 100% to consume. But at the same time, I feel like we profited indirectly off of people's suffering. And that's a really strange thing to think about because when you think about Ruby, for example, like this is mostly Genlock and Nomad, right? Yep. But think about it, okay? We make videos theorizing about the character shorts, and then they don't get one, and everyone's outraged, but really they can't do one because they have no budget and they're being crunched, and like all of these other things. Like, you understand what I'm saying? And so it makes me feel sort of bad because I feel like that, in a sense, we are also responsible for putting certain expectations out there into the world. And we don't have that big of an influence, but for example, I made an entire video on the character short for Ruby Volume 7. Then we didn't get one, and so there was some, I deleted the video, I just deleted it, but there was some fallout from that, and I can't help but feel personally responsible for hyping people up and sort of all that stuff. And so it just sucks to know that the people you love so much, like respect so much, as artists and as content creators went through this, especially when it comes, um, you know, to the animators, obviously, but then you sort of think about off in the distance, the creator of Nomad, yes. who had the show taken away from him and all of that stuff that other I sources are reporting on or yeah. collaborating on. And it just, it just fucking sucks, dude. Like, I don't know how else to say it. And like, people were like, Cal, you sound like you're gonna cry. Cause I put this insertion at the beginning of the video we did yesterday. Um, uh, to show the image and that the image had been released, but I was gonna cry because like it made me so Sad and even like I'm showing all this stuff to hunter and he's like, well, are you sure and then I'm going through the entire day Pretending to be a journalist and hunters like Fucking damn it. Like, you know what I mean? Cuz he was like, are you sure like we should verify that like you were hesitant a little at first And I think that's cuz you didn't want to believe it to be true But then you because, saw it happening yeah. in real time and you were like fuck because I think you do have to you know evaluate evidence but when you have a bunch of people who and i've seen like the original conversations between Cal yeah and the hunter people saw that the Ruby, twitter or facebook or tumblr or linkedin or whatever messaging having service the same used. stories independent of each other you realize that yeah this was happening but i'm also optimistic one because apparently i'm glad hunter's still optimistic but you the can't thing. help it because you can't you really can't because people were like cal um, or Hunter, they were like, Hunter, sorry, I'm on Cal's side. And I got four or five comments on yesterday's video about that, about being and So you, you might can't have been help. Right. And like, I, I mean, I kind of was and in a sense. Um, but, I you know, should, I understand yeah. though, because even other people know, like there are good people at Rooster yeah, Teeth. that's what I'm There are good people at Rooster Teeth. Matt Gray Holland, is gone. If Gray caused this, Miles he's gone. Carrie. Okay, but the Gray purpose of gone. this video is isn't gone. to really shit on Rooster Teeth. Really, I want this out there. So one day, if this video, depending on how many views it gets, because it's long, I don't know, that somebody's going to hire Gray Haddock and he's going to look up Gray Haddock on the internet and he's going to see this video, this 50 minute video of our news sources and maybe he won't be able to be in a position of power where he's able to hurt people. Or maybe or he'll change and that, be able to yeah. self-reflect and know what he did was wrong. That's okay too because I do believe that people change. I don't believe that somebody should just be cancelled forever. Right? You know what I mean? Like I don't feel... And be blackballed and be, from an Exactly. But... If he has no remorse, which we don't know, allegedly, supposedly, maybe, Apparent possibly, apparently, like, we don't know. We don't know him. And that's the important thing. I'm not going to pretend like I know who he is. That we're CEOs, but armchair CEOs. if he really has no remorse for this, he shouldn't work in this sort of position ever again. That's just my hot take, okay? Clearly, putting some of the weird-ass shit aside, okay, the narcissistic, egotistical, gallivanting off to Japan and bragging about what he did last weekend to this group in a Monday meeting, like putting that aside, he has bad leadership skills. And we've done 
uh, if you guys don't know, I worked with the police and we had to go through this like leadership uh, seminar with this guy who started this global and um, leadership initiative. And there's all these sort of things that make good leadership. And Gray is like zero, like he's just none of those things. He's actually one, and that's the charismatic part. And that to me is creepy. Okay, it's creepy that Gray seems like a charming, charismatic, a personable guy. Ruby YouTubers have met him and not been able to sniff out his alleged psychopathy or his alleged, you know, terrible person tendencies, right? And I said this yesterday in a YouTube comment, but you should never, ever, ever think that how celebrities are in their videos, whether it's YouTube influencers or celebrities, that is not how they are in real life. Everyone has multiple sides to them, and it doesn't mean that they have a bad side or a dark side like, or an evil side. Like it's Cal just is a different terrible. Side. You don't even know. <laughs> it's just a different side, and right? But in Gray's case, I think it is a bad side or a bad tendency side or a bad leaning side. Or it could just be that he was in a position that he wasn't ready I for. I think maybe he went power power driven, power hungry. He or got that a little. He, he was able know. to like abuse the system, and he did for his benefit, and it yeah. didn't work out. No. And I think that hopefully with him gone and Cohen potentially gone and Matt still yeah. maybe more vigilant and I know yeah. maybe new people coming in that there could be newer shows and these newer sets. The next time they get a good pitch yeah. like Nomad or like Genlock that they will well, do it Genlock's right. Well, Genlock's not the good, I mean, well, I I mean it's Genlock's, a good show. Genlock's a very good show. I, I, not the, I mean the pitch part. Yeah. Um, but it's like, yeah, because think about it, okay? Other people got denied their pitches because of Genlock. I hope that those people that had good 3D pitches are able to make the make the round, you know what I mean? Like actually get up there and Matt will give those people a chance. Cause I know after Genlock, they're gonna need some time to lick their wounds and recover. Yeah. But I think it could really raise morale if you give the people who actually deserve the shot the shot. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Because I think the Nomad creator 100% deserved it. And look what you did to him. And I'm like, Our people may not right? want to... Yeah, look what Gray did to him. I don't mean you as in... Allegedly. Yeah, allegedly. I'm just saying, like, you... They drove they drove the dude away. And so it's sort of like, how is that going to make other animators feel or other writers or storyboarders or whatever feel when they want to pitch an idea to you? Because now they remember, oh, well, look what happened to the Nomad dude, right? Even the people that aren't in the same department know what happened to the Nomad dude. The Nomad dude is a cautionary tale of how you should never, ever, ever pitch anything because they'll steal it from you and make it something it's not supposed to be. And so it's like, that's a little scary. And so that really makes me mad. But you know what makes me so fucking furious is that Gray commented on people getting laid off, okay? So let's just make everything fucking clear, all right? He posted like, you're gonna be okay. I'll help you network. I'll do this, I'll do that. And maybe that's his guilt. Maybe that's just him trying to save face and like post something to social media. We don't know. Allegedly, or supposedly, possibly. maybe it's genuine possibly. feelings and he really was in a position he wasn't prepared for. Maybe, and making bad but decisions. with all of this stuff, here's my perspective, okay? And I'm not saying this is the truth. This is my perspective as a fan and looking at all this, okay? He is responsible for people getting fired. Potentially. Potentially. He, it's mostly the animators who got laid off. He went millions over budget. And when your show doesn't succeed and get that yeah. money back, you have to fire people, right? How are you supposed to pay for the animators to stay if, first of all, they have no more money because they went over budget on Genlock, and then second, Genlock didn't even make that money back. They had to get rid of these people, right? And so that makes me so angry that he is responsible, and he's commenting on these, or he's posting this big post, right? Like, oh, like, everything will be okay. Don't worry, I'll help you network, right? Which is a good offer if it's true that he can help them if it's true. But then he's like, oh, by the way, I also left. And he's lumping himself in with the people that got laid off, arguably, potentially, supposedly because of him. And, and that makes me so angry. And then under that post, it's everybody's like, oh, like, Gray, we wish you the best. Like, we did, like, you did such good work with Denlock and Ruby. It's all these fans. Right? That maybe don't, that right, don't know. That they yeah. don't know because they don't know until this video comes out, right? Like, if they, if it, like, if ever, right? And so that pisses me off that I don't, it just makes me so angry that 
he is now getting all this sympathy from people because he's lumping himself in with the laid-offs, right, that he doesn't deserve. And that pisses me off. Like, I don't know if you guys ever seen me angry. I was fucking livid on this train when source number three two, pointed that out to me, that Gray lumped himself in because I didn't even think of it like that until they said it. And then I realized, holy shit, no, he did do that. And it's manipulative and it's scummy and it, i'm glad and it i took back my lights and, and i took back my lights off his post with all of the things people have said about him that yeah year. and that's terrible and i potentially i don't know it it feels like because here's my perspective again this isn't the truth we don't know this i feel like this dude has an ego problem i feel like oh i got michael b jordan and david Tennant and jenna it's gonna be so big we're gonna submit it for an emmy even though it Maple doesn't work. deserve one right and it sort was of a good show. it wasn't an emmy show okay that's just my opinion all right that's just my hot take a uh, lot of questionable shows win emmys and so it's one of those things where i'm just like emmy. you <laughs> I think his ego just got so big and now these fans that are giving him sympathy just made it bigger because yeah. now they're giving him sympathy you're giving him what he wants do not okay don't feel bad for gray all right that's my blanket statement even if you think oh well maybe he was a good guy for no don't feel bad for him now okay because this is the consequences of his actions even if he's remorseful for it even if he feels sorry that it happened this is the consequence of his direct actions and he deserves those consequences of not being with RT anymore, right? And I just feel like if you're making a show, it should just, I don't know, like to have your dreams come true and your work come to life, like that should go to the people that deserve it. And throughout all this, apparently, Miles and Carrie are the only people that are still good in this world. And so it's sort of like, I hope that they allocate the resources to Miles and Carrie because I think that they genuinely deserve it because they are not or, dictators or that, and they are not moving abusing forward. their staff. Like, moving forward, and Miles think, and Carrie deserve the funds to continue to expand their world in Monty's world and all of that stuff, whereas Gray didn't deserve it to begin with because obviously he couldn't handle that sort of But maybe power. with him gone, Genla can be created in a more ethical way and still maybe. be a good show. So, yeah. That's it. That's all we have time I, I'm for. I'm still optimistic because I still think that Matt Hullum's a good guy. I do I think too. That moving that's forward, the that's the revelation is that like all these people are shitting on Matt and I'm like no Matt was there. Guy. Matt stormed it's out. A shame like that, that paints he's a picture. The heat when it he is, and he's a CEO, and I get that you're gonna get the heat because you're the CEO, but he did not deserve it. Okay, Matt deserves better. He tried really, and I understand that it's all under his responsibility because he is the CEO. This is basically all Gray's fault, allegedly, looking at what we have now, spending over budget on Genlock, doing this, doing that. Like, Nomad of Nowhere could have been a moneymaker if he didn't drive the Nomad of Nowhere creator away. Like, it's just these chain of events. It's like one action caused another action caused another action, and now we're in this predicament. And so really, technically, supposedly, possibly, everything is literally his fault. And that's a weird thing to sort of realize. And I know that our other sources said that there's a lot of other toxic faces that support Gray. And so that may be a problem, yeah. but I think that's an internal communication thing. That's a class I'm taking this semester. Internal issues on communication or something. And so it's like, you guys may just need to get all the faces in a room and explain to them that they are not better than the laborers. They are not better than the animators just because you're a personality. And I feel like that a lot of celebrities and personalities have that attitude. But that can be something that is you know shut down with internal communication that's sort of my opinion on that part um but in other news we in happiness like we do still like rooster still teeth like we just Ruby. want the best is isn't to be like wow rooster teeth's terrible no it's that this one person caused a lot of people pain and in the future i think that rooster teeth you know obviously will have learned their lesson exactly they learned their lesson and hopefully it won't be the lesson that kills them sort of thing and i don't think that it will i do see a lot of good in what these sources were saying, especially about like for us personally, Miles and Carrie. Like I met Miles and Carrie at RTX this year. If they turned out to be psychopaths, I think that I would just have a mental breakdown. Um, so yeah, that's basically that's basically it. Um, I don't think there's anything else to say. I don't know if you guys 
can tell, like, because a lot of people are like, oh, yeah, Cal, when you laugh at all these characters die, like, no, you guys don't understand that I'm so fucking angry, like, this is sort of the appearance that my face just takes, you know what I mean, and I know that we're trying to sort of laugh it off and keep it, you know, it's just that we're so, it's so uncomfortable, and it's so fucking frustrating that we are just so angry, and I would love to talk more about how I'm angry, because I am angry, and, like, you know, the frustr- like, the sadness from yesterday turning into this frustration, but at least it was productive, and at least I took that and did something, because that was really why I did it, because I was so fucking pissed. I was like, okay, I'm gonna email this person, I'm gonna message that person, I'm going to do something about it, I'm gonna use my influence, and I really hope that other Ruby YouTubers will share this video, or at least maybe do their own with, mm -hmm. you know, sourced by Calax and whatever, right? Because we technically found all this information, so like, hello, credit us, please. Um, so yeah, it's just sort of one of those things where I'm like, more people with more influence should do something, but I hope that our video does get shared if people like other YouTubers don't want to do it because I understand other YouTubers have deals and not deals, but they have, you know, uh, like, oh, like you get like the Ruby manga, you get like this early, you get that early, you get the Ruby after the fall, but like those aren't actual things. Like I'm just saying like as an example, like I know that content creators, some of them get stuff like that. And I understand they may not want to be in hot water with Rooster Teeth, but this isn't about Rooster Teeth. This is the one man who literally nearly killed the company so yeah or that's it certainly it. did major damage damage kind of very thing. damage anyway we're gonna go because the only good thing in this world is miraculous and it's actually airing in two minutes uh so i guess that we will see you guys later hope that you guys feel more informed bye